back to the vlog. I'm Gabby from Gabadashery and today is a game of two halves. So I'm going to be showing a tutorial for how to make box cushions. So that's cushions with like a wide edge so that uh, you can have, you know, like foam in between. And also going to be talking about my faff machine, the Quilt Ambition 2, because I've had it for a few weeks now and really got to know it and I thought it was about time I showed you what it could do. So yeah, I have been basically very busy doing DIY with my husband. We've been making bay window seating for round the bay window. <laughs> and I've been needing to do quite a bit of upholstery, which I haven't done before. And I basically have made so far three main big cushions uh, for the back area so to sit on and we realized that there was a bit of a draft coming through the window so now I need to make three sides like really short cushions to go behind us um, so that we're nice and cozy in there and we had quite a bit of foam left over and also some fabric to make them with so I did put up a little thing on Instagram and said does anyone want me to do a tutorial while I'm making the next lot and pretty much everyone said yes I think it was like 98% yes and there were hundreds of votes so thank you you guys um, so here I am doing that um, the reason why I wanted to do a tutorial is because I couldn't find anything exactly like what I wanted online because I wanted it to be really simple and user-friendly and um, I'm not doing any piping or anything it's it is literally just um, fabric covering of a piece of foam and it is really really easy to do so yeah, here's my like quick tutorial on that and um, in between we will talk about the lovely Quilt Ambition 2 by Faf. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> okay, I just realized how clashy I am at my dress and the fabric. Um, I have already filmed a bit of the cutting out of the foam. Uh, my husband was basically doing it and I just helped and hoovered up. Um, but the... Um, but the way that we did it is we measured the area. So it's 15 and a half height. And this one was 99 maybe? Uh, 99 centimeters across. And then drew a line on both sides and then cut through um, the middle. So you use a sharp knife. If you've got an electric kitchen knife, by the way, I've seen this online, it literally glides through, it's amazing. But if you've got something shorter like us, you go down to the middle on one side and then flip it and go down to the middle on the other and you'll have a lovely straight edge. Don't worry too much about like little bobbly bits. I mean, we could spend ages trying to take them off. I wouldn't worry about them. They're fine. Um, I've used a stuff called e-foam, which was on Amazon. It was really inexpensive. I've gone for the two inches depth and this is perfect for us because we didn't want anything too cushy um, but at the same time it needs to be comfortable so yeah two inches was perfect but it's really up to you if you use the very easy calculations I give you in a bit then it doesn't matter about the depth of the foam or the width or the height now for the main cushions I also use like a wadding on top and underneath. Um, I use just a fleece wadding that I already had. I use spray mount adhesive on one side, stuck it to it, left it for half an hour and then flipped it over, spray mount adhesive and then stuck it on the other side. Just to kind of smooth out the foam a bit more, just to pad it out a bit more and make it a bit softer. Um, but I don't need to do that for the box, for the back box cushions because they are really slotting in place. So um, there's just no need for that. So I'm gonna go straight to cutting out fabric and let's do it. For this tutorial, you will need foam cut to your desired length and width, pins, scissors, pinking shears, a measuring tape or a meter ruler or something to measure with, a fabric pen marker, a knife to cut the foam if you haven't already and zips cut to your desired length. Um, I've got a zip on a roll here but any zips will do just normal zips that will fit the size of your desired cushion. That's all! So here is the bay window area and these are the cushions I made earlier so you can see that I've used the fabric on the edge and the top and the bottom um, and they got better and better as I went along <laughs> but they look really good and now we're making the cushions to go here 
so this is 15 and a half centimeters and then three different lengths so at the back it's 120 uh, here is 98 and here is 99 so let's get on with it we have one piece of foam at 98 centimeters by 15 and a half we have another at 99 and another at 120 centimeters length so to find the size of fabric we're going to do 120 plus seam allowance on each side so it's going to be a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance on both sides of three centimeters so i'm going to cut a fat piece of fabric at 123 centimeters long and 15 and a half centimeters high is going to be plus three centimeters for seam allowance either side so that's going to be 18 and a half centimeters high okay let's cut the fabric okay so let's do the fabric cutting out so i have folded my fabric this beautiful um upholstery cotton i got from gold hawk road um in half right sides together selvage to selvage and i am going to measure out i think this is 70 from the selvage yeah to the edge so if i want 123 um i do half of that so <laughs> i need a calculator <laughs> so 123 divided by 2 is 61.5 if you would prefer to cut your fabric just straight then you just do the straight measurement but i prefer to cut it on the fold and i'm going for 61.5 centimeters okay so just make a mark on it and then further down as well 61.5 oh they're not very high of course <laughs> forgot about that bit just check that it's straight so i'm going to just use this because it's easier um, for smaller things but 18.5 okay and so just check that mark to the edge there we go cut that out okay so that is one length if you want to just test it on the foam just check yes perfect and you can see that there's a bit of seam allowance there which is great you've got 1.5 centimeter seam allowance all the way around so then cut out exactly the same again so the quickest easiest way to do this is fold this back in half and just use it as a bit of a pattern piece there on top the folds together um, you can stick a pin in it or put a pattern weight down put a pattern right down and then just cut around let's check it's all in the right place yeah okay so now we've got the top and the bottom cut out we work out our sides so we first of all need a zip section so at the back of the cushion preferably you would have a zip to let you into the cushion uh, through the case so I've got this amazing zips on a roll and I would like the back length of the cushion to have a zip in most of it so it's nice and easy to put in. So I would measure my zip or you just get a nice long zip uh, at about two thirds of the back is how long I want it to be. So I want an 80 centimeter zip so i'm going to cut that to that in a minute but let's sort out the zip section of the boxing so you would cut a piece about 100 centimeters long because you would want to um, have a little bit in before and after the zip the width of the zip section is your depth in foam so mine's five centimeters plus the seam allowance so that's two lots of 1.5 centimeters so that's eight centimeters 
plus the width of your zip and mine is two and a half so we're at ten and a half centimeters wide so now I've cut out my zip section so that will be the back of the cushion and uh, let's cut out the box bits first, the sides, and then we'll get back to the zip. So for the sides, you want the depth of your foam. So again, mine is five centimeters plus the seam allowance on both sides. So that's 1.5 centimeters on both sides. So that's eight centimeters and make as much as you possibly can <laughs> if you're making lots of cushions. If you're not, then you want to uh, measure the perimeter of your cushion but leaving out the back bit for the zip, so normally something like that. Um, but it's better to have more than less, just I guess don't be too wasteful. I'm gonna cut about 200 centimeters of eight centimeter strips, and that will definitely do me for one cushion, I think. Okay, so now we have our zip and our zip piece. What you want to do is fold your zip piece right sides together all along the long side. Don't worry too much about pressing this unless it's a fabric that really is not going to stay in place but you can kind of finger press it all the way along and what you're going to do is sew a channel all the way down from the fold at 1.5 centimeter seam allowance so i'm going to get out the faff and start sewing okay let me introduce you to this wonderful sewing machine i um, noticed that it's glowing quite a bit <laughs> it's like a spaceship so this is the faff quilt ambition 2.0 and it's a great sewing machine it's got embroidery stitches in fact it's got 201 stitches and then all the characters of the alphabet in five different fonts um it's got lots and lots of lovely stitches it's um buttonhole is amazing it even has a sewing on button foot and a free motion embroidery foot as well and i'm just going to do straight stitch <laughs> at the normal settings for now now the best thing i think about this machine and also the passport too that i've got is it's got the idt system which is especially a faf system which is an integrated jewel feed system so basically like a walking foot built into your sewing machine so if you've got a tricky fabric or maybe a stretch fabric you can put the foot the idt foot on which you just literally pull down into place and it means that the feed dogs are both going at the same time dragging your fabric through um in a really nice way for sewing so yeah it just kind of stabilizes it basically and makes it a lot easier to sew as opposed to moving around with one feed so let's sew i've got the zip section here um i've got it folded in half and you can kind of do it while you're sewing as well and i'm literally going to sew a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance from the fold so like this and you can back stitch at the beginning and the end you're basically making a nice channel there's also a lock-in stitch on this machine which is great so instead of a back stitch it just locks it in so it does a three on one so i do a little lock stitch and then off i go so i'll make sure as i'm sewing that the two sides are together Oh, it's just letting me know that the bobbin is nearly empty there. That's another little feature that I love. Um, I can close that up so it looks even smarter. And I'll do another lock stitch. So now you have basically a channel the whole way down your zip section. So you just cut right down. So there's the sewing, there's the fold, and you cut along the fold, basically. So what I'll do is when I get to the other end, I'll then just quickly snip the very top off with the pinking shears so they don't fray. It's really fun, this bit. I don't know why I get a real sense of enjoyment out of just slicing through <laughs> a channel like this. Nice and you do that all the way to the end. this is where I would just pinking shears 
off. You don't want to lose too much seam allowance, so just a tiny bit, just literally losing the top of it. Just to stop it fraying. Or you could run both sides for an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, just don't overlock them together. Okay, so now you've got your zip channel now cut in half again and the edges finished off if they need to be if your fabric froze and you just want to again finger press it now open so you're opening the side and you're opening the seam allowance as well so that you're making a nice flat thing um, you can get the iron out and press this bit I'm not going to because I'm just doing it for the tutorial's sake but um, I did for the other cushion so yeah getting the iron out at this point is a really good idea and giving it a good press a nice press open like that so you want to get the middle part of your zip so fold your zip in half and make a little line with your pen just a little line so you can see where the halfway point is and also do the same with your zip piece your zip section so I might do actually just a little snip for the halfway point of the zip section okay. now with the right side facing down and your seam allowance open you want to find that middle point of the zip section there it is and lay the zip right face down matching the center points and then you pin in place and you're pinning through the seam allowance and the main fabric as well and you want to have your pins uh, in the right direction of the zip. So I'm going to be sewing from the right hand side all the way to the bottom and then pivot, go back on myself and all the way back down again. So I want my pins to be facing in this direction. So I'm going to swap this over because it's facing in the wrong direction. I do admit this bit would be easier if I opened up the seam allowances with an iron. So do do that. <laughs> Don't do it the Gabby way. Okay, so now your zipper is pinned to your zipper section. You want to get out your zipper foot. Your zipper foot. So this is how this one looks on the faff. Move it onto your machine. So the zipper foot will be close to this edge. And you basically sew like you would normally sew down the length of the zipper. A little lock-in of stitch. Okay. Remove the pins as you go. I love the speed this machine sews at. Yes, it really goes for it. There you go. Now when you get to the bottom of the zip, carry on a little bit leave the needle in so needle down which this has got a really cool button that you can just press needle down and then lift the foot pivot it round so you just want to sew along the bottom of the zip and then i would back stitch and go over it again to make sure it's really securely in but that's not a needed step that's just what i do Then when you're at the other side of the zip, put your needle down again, pivot round and sew up this side. So you want to get as close to the teeth as possible. And up to the end. And then at the other end, again, I just like to go over it a few times, go backwards and forwards, make sure it's securely not going to pop out. Okay, so now that the zip is securely in, look at that. It's really 
sewn on and on this side you can just see a nice kind of square of it what you want to do sorry it's fraying like crazy this fabric it gets everywhere is get to the top of it and either with little snips or with a seam ripper you uh just literally rip down the seam like so there it is there's the zip again i really enjoy doing this bit I'll make sure that the threads don't get caught in the zip. And leave a little bit at the end. Not unpicked. And that is the hole for your zip. <laughs> okay, so now that bit's done, you want to take your boxing strips. So I've got a nice long strip here and attach any other bits uh, depending on how long you think you're going to need it so I'm going to attach another bit so literally right sides together at one short end and just sew them together one centimeter seam allowance is fine back to the normal foot now so just sew those short ends together at about one centimeter seam allowance Um, and I'll give that a little snip with the pinking shears so that it doesn't fray. And that should be plenty for one side of the cushion plus the zip section. So now you want to sew the zip section onto one of the short ends as well, like so. Right sides together always with these. And again, one centimeter seam allowance is fine. and finish with the pinking shears again all right so now we've got our edge piece our top and our bottom the only thing we have to do left now is to connect them now the first thing you have to remember it's really important is to make sure that your zip is open a little bit because once it's sewn up if your zip is closed it's going to make your life very hard so yeah have your zip a little bit open and then take one of your tops or bottoms, it doesn't matter, of your cushion cover and choose which side you want the back to be. Again, it shouldn't matter, but maybe if you're doing a shaped one, then it will. And you literally sew the sides to the edges of the top, like this, like so. And I'll show you when we get to the corners what you do there. Uh, depending on the length of your zip section, you may want to start your zip in the middle. So I'm going to do that. I've already marked the middle of my zip section. So I'm going to also mark the middle of this. So just a little snip or drawing a little line or whatever. And there's the middle there. So let's meet those two together. That's it. And you're literally pinning the whole way around right side together. You don't really need to pin this bit. Um, as long as the you've kind of worked out where the top pin should be and where you should start sewing like that. Pop a pin in that. Then as long as you're holding it together while you're sewing it, you don't really need a pin. Again, if you're a beginner, I would pin uh, as much as possible. But if you're a little bit more advanced, then just go for it. <laughs> so let's get the sewing machine back. And let's show you what I'm up to. Okay, so when you're attaching the sides to the front or the back, it doesn't matter which, uh, you start with the zip panel 
and give it a couple of inches before you start sewing because you're going to attach the rest of the box sides to the other end of this so the two ends attach so start sewing a couple of inches down you can pin it in place if you like um, I'm not going to because my fabric doesn't shift too much and then at a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance so yeah just leave a little bit at the end do a bit of back stitching remove the pin and off you go and just make sure it aligns all the way so when you get to the corner you want to leave your needle down and lift your foot when you're about 1.5 centimeters seam allowance to the end and then you're going to cut a little incision in just the boxing side up to the needle or as close as possible and then pivot it round moving the boxing as well so that the edges align bring the foot back down and carry on sewing at a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance get back to the start or the end uh, you want to join the two bits left over right sides together where they're going to meet um, in the middle and just do a quick join I've not left very much fabric <laughs> so you probably should have a little bit more fabric than this but I'm going to do a very small seam allowance and uh, there we go just sew these two together now yeah perfect so then I can sew straight over I'm gonna um, just clip this off with the pinking shears and finish off this side you can move the seam allowance you just did to the side as well great thing about the sewing machine is even with all these different layers it still feels like I'm just sewing cotton <laughs> like quilting cotton okay and that should be more than enough and just give that a back stitch over that bump again okay so uh, you just want to pinking shear all the way around the seam allowances it's also a good idea to snip off any corners as close to the stitching as possible so that they're really nice clean corners okay when you've done all that pinking shear business you want to attach the other side you take the top or the bottom whichever bit you haven't put on yet and you attach to the corners first so the best way to do this is to press the corner in along the top of the box make a little snip where the corner is and you do that on all four corners so again you get to where the corner is press it together make sure it's nice and straight I guess and then make a little snip other side come to the corner press it together and here as well snip. and then you're going to match up those snips with the corners right sides together of the other piece so starting at this corner here is the snip 
there's the corner so I'm going to put a little pin in that and here put a pin in that the other corners match them up pin and then you can start sewing so we are sewing down the sides and you go the whole way around make sure your zips open I can't say that enough make sure your zip is open and go for it you might want to start a little bit further in than on a corner it kind of makes life a bit easier so I'm going to start just by the beginning of the zip and give it a little back stitch. Line them up on a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. And sew all the way round. And where the little snip is, is where you want to put down the needle. Yeah. Pivot it round. It's quite fiddly this bit. There we go. And carry on at 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Just make sure you don't sew into the other layer of it. I definitely find it's easier to sew this way round, so you want to have the face um, pointing down and the boxing underneath. It's just easier to see what you're doing. Okay, so as before, we're so nearly there guys, we've done all the sewing. So we're gonna just snip off all the corners and pinking shears off the sides and then we're gonna put the foam inside. Exciting! Okay, so it's all done. Let's turn it the right way out. So that's why the zip needed to be open. Uh, uh, uh. And bring out the corners, make them nice and smooth. So you want to just get your hand in there and really push those corners out. It's like a big worm. <laughs> I feel like I've made a big worm. Um, yeah, when you start pulling out the zip, you can open it a bit further as well. open the zip so I can get my hand in the other corners and now for the moment of truth here's the piece of foam this is never that pretty putting this in but let me try and struggle with it for a minute <laughs> uh, you can fold the foam in two and push it in that way but I think for this long flat cushion shape I'm just going to do it like this. So just close up the zip, like so. Oh, there's a big old worm. I need to sort some bits out because the uh, the edge is not quite on the edge. But yeah, there you go. Ta -da! 
So thank you so much for watching that vlog. I hope you enjoyed learning about making box cushions and also about the Faf Quilt Ambition 2. And yeah, I hope you're all having a lovely week. I will see you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.